Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bethany. Welcome back to the Digest This Podcast. I'm really, really excited about this episode because I'm sharing a bunch of different protein bars and I'm going in down to the nitty gritty about all the things, which ones I like, which ones I disapprove of and why. And there's a lot of these protein bars are pretty new to the market. And then some of them are very well known, which I get asked all the time on my Instagram about, oh, what's what's my opinion? Would I eat it? And, and why would I, or why would I not eat it? All that good stuff. So today we're going down. Obviously I can't answer all of the questions about all of the bars. There's so many coming to the market. Just every, I feel like every month there's like a new protein bar brand, right? So obviously I'm not covering them all, but I did pick pretty much the top ones that are pretty familiar with many of you guys. And then also I picked some that are new to the market and you may not know about, or they're just kind of going under the radar. So I hope you guys take a listen, enjoy it, share it with friends and family. But before we do, I wanted to give a shout out to Rock Girl Yoga. And she wrote... Found your story so inspiring. Your show is humbling and informative as well as fun to listen to. There's always something new to learn and we can all share info with each other. I am a psychiatric nurse practitioner and I strongly believe in the mind-body connection. And I do my best to teach people how to keep this connection. Keep up the great work on your podcast. God bless you, Julia N. And she gave it five stars. Well, Thank you so much, Julia. And thank you to everyone who goes and takes the five seconds to just rate and review the podcast. It truly means a lot. And I truly love reading each and every one. All my regular listeners know that each month I give away amazing quality goods to those that simply rate and review the podcast. And so for the month of October, I'm giving away giant pale buckets of Artisana Organics organic chocolate spreads, plus their seasonal gingerbread pecan butters to three of my listeners. You guys heard me. I'm dishing out giant buckets of basically a healthier version of Nutella that's organic certified, palm oil free, cashew cocoa spread, just in time for all your holiday baking. If you were to buy this online, one pail would cost you $58 just for one bucket of this delicious chocolate spread. That just goes to show how much volume this pail truly contains and what you'll be getting. Plus, I'm also going to include two extra jars of Artisana Organics Seasonal Gingerbread Pecan Spread you can only get from them directly. This is not sold in stores. So three of my listeners will receive over $80 worth of quality organic nut butters. And all you have to do is rate and review this podcast, and I will be reaching out to you on Instagram if chosen. So be sure you leave your IG handle in your review. Good luck. I don't know about you, but for me, when it gets into the cooler months, I don't drink enough water and it's easy for me to get dehydrated. Like most people, we often drink less water in the fall and winter for a few reasons. First of all, it isn't hot like it is in the summer, so naturally our thirst for water goes down because we aren't sweating in the sun. But just because it's not hot doesn't mean we need less hydration. We need the same amount all year long. And in fact, we may actually need more in the wintertime because most of us are drinking more hot coffees, lattes, and teas, which can actually dehydrate you. Yes, you heard me. Caffeinated drinks like coffee and tea can dehydrate us. So for every one cup of coffee, we should be consuming three additional cups of water. Most people don't take that into consideration. It's just so easy to opt for a hot cup of joe rather than just water in the cooler months. I'm not saying you should stop enjoying your cup of joe for sure, right? I enjoy a cup of coffee myself. But what I am reminding you and myself is to drink extra water. Now, a trick for me to drink extra water is by adding one packet of Elements electrolytes into my Stanley cup. By doing this, it helps me not only stay hydrated, but I'm also getting my daily electrolyte needs. 
Sometimes it's not enough just to drink plain water. And we often need essential minerals to help balance out our body and stay hydrated. I personally stick with Element's raw unflavored version, which contains no sugar, no flavorings, no coloring, and no fillers. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of salt, magnesium, and potassium, and their unflavored version has only those three ingredients. Other electrolyte drink mixes have added sugar, maltodextrin, dextrose, gums, and even added oils. Electrolytes are essential for our body to function, so you want to not only make sure you are getting them, but you are getting the best kind. There's also research to back that when you keep hydrated, there are lower risks of anxiety and depression in individuals. So at the very least, do it for your mental health. And it's a cheap way to prevent all sorts of other issues caused by dehydration. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited for those following a keto, low carb, vegan, or paleo diet. And right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packs free with any Element order. To get free packs, you must go to drinklmnt.com slash digest to get this offer. Element also has a no questions asked refund policy. So you can literally try it totally risk free. And if you don't like it, they will give you a full refund, all your money back, no questions asked. And you can keep what you have. So you have literally nothing to lose. So just go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash digest to get this amazing offer. All right, guys, now let's get into this episode about protein bars. Now, this is all informed consent, which means I am just sharing the facts and it's up to you to decide whether you want to consume them regardless of my own opinion. So... If I didn't cover your favorite or you want my review on a bar that was not in this episode, feel free to just shoot me a DM on Instagram and let me know and I can take note for next time. And also just make sure to save this episode so you can reference back to it when you need it, when you're at the store and share it with your protein bar junkie friends. All right, first up is Go Macro. So this is a plant-based protein bar containing just 10 grams of protein per bar. So to me, the protein content is a little low if you're calling it a protein bar, especially since there are 270 calories providing only 10 grams of protein. You guys, two eggs provide 12 grams of protein and that's just 140 calories. So you might as well just eat two eggs to me. And when choosing a protein bar, you should try and aim for at least 15 grams of protein. Otherwise, it's just a snack bar with a little bit of protein, if you ask me. Go Macro's ingredients list is quite a sugar bomb as well. The very first ingredient is brown rice syrup, aka liquid sugar. And their newest flavor, salted caramel chocolate chip, contains two additional forms of sugar, which is organic maple sugar and organic coconut sugar, as well as natural flavors. And if you don't know about natural flavors, I have an entire blog post on my website, littlesipper.com, about what they are, what they consist of. So in short... There can be up to 50 different ingredients that make up a single natural flavor, but the FDA does not require companies to list those ingredients that make up these so-called natural flavors. And another reason why I personally would stay away from Go Macro. Next up is Papa Steve's. Now, this company may not be well known, but they have a variety of raw, vegan, whey protein, and paleo bars. So they have different types if you're raw vegan, if you consume whey, if you're paleo, etc. Papa Steve's gets their ingredients the day before production so that everything is as fresh as possible. Most ingredients are locally sourced and organic and everything is handmade and shipped from Southern California. In their raw vegan dark chocolate coconut bar specifically, the ingredients are 
raw organic coconut, organic dates, pea protein, raw hemp seeds, 100% organic certified raw cacao, raw pumpkin seeds, tapioca fiber, chia seeds, organic coconut oil, organic coconut palm nectar, and organic vanilla bean. Now, the only ingredient I am hesitant on is the tapioca fiber. And I'm sure you're wondering that as well because adding fiber to foods like that don't naturally have fiber in them can cause imbalances. And I talk about this in another episode about fake fiber and inulin and adding that kind of fiber to protein bars, et cetera. So definitely go back and listen to that episode. But I really do like the ingredients and uh, the fact that they don't use fake sweeteners or natural flavorings. Each flavor of bar is different, so do your due diligence and check each flavor yourself, and uh, each will vary, obviously. So there's about 300 calories in these bars, and the protein content is around 16 grams each. All right, let's talk Lara bars. All right, so I know these are not technically protein bars, but I wanted to give them a mention because I, I personally really do like them. They're original line of bars, that is. So I know they have so many different types and categories now, but I'm just talking about the original OG bars. The ingredients are so minimal with some only containing just two ingredients. Now, the protein content is a little, pretty low, little to none really, but if you are looking just for a yummy snack on the go, these are a win. It's good to note, however, they are not organic. So if you want a flavor recommendation, I love their cashew cookie and coconut cream pie. Kind bars are very popular and this brand has a line of protein bars specifically. And when I say that, I say it lightly (laughs) because the protein bars contain just 12 grams of protein in a 240 calorie bar. Again, two eggs will give you the same amount of protein with half the calories and zero carbs the marketing that goes into these bars is just ridiculous. Like on their website, they highlight the facts that they are a zero gram trans fat food. It's gluten-free. It's a good source of fiber, a good source of protein. It's kosher. It's low sodium. It's non-GMO. It's low glycemic. So like all these buzzwords and marketing terms, and this goes for any type of, of protein bar you really have to watch out for. So it sounds great, but then... What are the actual ingredients in the bar? Well, the third ingredient after peanuts and almonds is glucose syrup, yum, (laughs) followed by soy protein isolate, honey, palm kernel oil, sugar, and (laughs) hickory root fiber, which wreaks havoc on the gut. Again, I have an entire Bite Knowledge episode about inulin and hickory root fiber. So definitely go back and listen to that. So these bars just also contain natural flavors. So along with everything else I just mentioned, natural flavors, just among more ingredients that I'm just not going to mention, but the marketing promotes these bars using unsweetened chocolate in the ingredients, which is true. But if you paid attention to the ingredients I just read, they add three different types of sugar in the bars. That's a way to say, hey, we use unsweetened chocolate in our bars. But then they fail to mention that they also add glucose syrup, honey, and straight up sugar to the bars. So sneaky, huh? All right, Quest bars. Now, I actually used to eat these like one a day, sometimes two a day. Back in my early 20s, I am almost 34. Four now, which is crazy. Anyway, so I used to eat like one to two of these a day, early 20s, so about 10 years ago. And I thought they were so good for you. I also think these contributed to my gut issues. They were, of course, not the cause, but certainly were in the mix and part of the the situation and didn't really help and just exacerbated everything personally in my own experience. Now, there's also been lawsuits against the company. The Quest Bar Nutrition Facts lawsuit is part of a class action lawsuit against the manufacturer of the bars. And there have even been three other lawsuits that were filed prior. In the most recent lawsuit, the plaintiffs are seeking compensation for the various health problems suffered by them, such as anemia, allergies, asthma, and other diseases caused by consuming these protein bars. Feel free to 
to research this yourself as you will find several different lawsuits, including one that claimed the fiber content in the bars were not actually as high as labeled. But lawsuits are besides my point. Have you ever looked at the ingredient list? Each bar is different per flavor, obviously, but the base is all the same, containing soluble corn fiber, erythritol, which I have a thing about that on my Instagram as well. It also contains natural flavors, another culprit, sunflower, lecithin, stevia, which is an endocrine disruptor and also is a contraceptive. I, again, have a reel about that on my Instagram. It also contains polydextrose, which is a zero calorie sweetener derived from glucose and fake fiber that causes intestinal gas, bloating, stomach cramps, and sometimes diarrhea. So it's up to you if you want to consume these. Again, I'm just speaking from what I know. Keep in mind that soluble corn fiber is often derived from genetically modified crops. So in fact, a 2000, in 2010, it was estimated that about 86% of corn grown in the United States and Canada was genetically modified. And that assist, uh, that those stats are over 10 years old. So I can only imagine what it truly is today. Now, if all that wasn't enough, I remember these bars giving me horrible headaches and leaving a really weird film in my mouth. They also made me crave them more and more, which is, of course, the artificial sweeteners in them and the natural flavors that make you addicted to to these bars. So fake sweeteners, natural flavors, they just make you addicted to the product you're consuming. And companies know this. And that is one of the reasons why they want to put natural flavors in them because they want you coming back for more, purchasing more of their product and make you addicted to them. So anyways, I'll digress. But if I even have to tell you, these are a hard pass for me. All right, now let's talk about Perfect Bar. These bars are sold in the refrigerator section to keep them fresh. And they had their moment back in 2018 and they've increased in distribution, getting into larger grocery chains such as Trader Joe's, Target, Walmart, Costco, Vons, and many more conventional grocers. But despite their wider distribution, their popularity in the health and wellness space has dwindled. I personally was never a fan just from the beginning and here's why. Their ingredient list is way too long despite the cleanliness of them. So you may ask, well, what do you mean by too long? Well, for anyone with gut issues, eating bars packed with tons of ingredients, regardless if they are clean, can upset the digestive system, causing bloating, cramping, and painful gas, especially if many of the ingredients are veggie powders. Too many ingredients at once can, quote, freak out, your tummy, and it's just too many different things to digest at once. But if you've tried them or you don't have gut issues, feel free to, you know, enjoy them and report back, you know, how you experience them. Each bar has around 300 calories, 20 grams of fat, and 14 to 15 grams of protein, which to me is pretty low for a 300 calorie bar. And you could easily get 17 grams of protein by just mixing two scoops of my digestive support protein powder for 90 calories and 1.5 grams of fat. So just saying. Quick pause because what would this podcast be without me sharing about the benefits of my very own digestive support plant-based protein powder by New Zest? If you don't know, I co-created the digestive support product by Newsest back in 2018, and it's been a top seller ever since. Why? Because I wanted to create an easy to digest protein powder without stevia or fake sweeteners, without gums, and without flavorings commonly found in other vegan protein powders. Not just found in protein powders, but also so-called gut support products, and these gums and additives can actually cause digestive upsets. With my protein powder, you'll find only clean, real, simple ingredients, and I chose to add a specific probiotic known to fight off candida and help the gut specifically. 
This probiotic is so strong, it does not need refrigeration. And since it doesn't need refrigeration, it can also survive your body's temperature, ensuring it survives once it gets down into your belly so it can start doing its job. You'll also find L-glutamine, which has been shown to help and heal, seal the gut, heal and seal the gut. Now, this is super important because the gut lining, obviously you don't want things leaking out. You don't want things seeping in. So L-glutamine can help restore the gut lining, resulting in an overall healthy and happy core. And we all know health starts in the gut. My digestive support protein is glyphosate free and contains no gluten, grains, or lectins. It's vegan, paleo, and keto friendly, as well as suitable for those on a candida or diabetic diet. If you want to grab a tab and start your journey to a healthier and happier gut and ultimately happier life, go to newsest.usa slash digest for a discount. That's N-U-Z-E-S-T dot U-S-A slash digest. This offer expires soon, so take advantage while you can. Okay, RX bars. I still get asked about these bars, you guys. So first of all, they got out, they got bought out by uh, Kellogg. And so Kellogg now owns them. These bars say no BS on the front, but I wonder what that means because on the front of the package, it supposedly lists their ingredients. But when you turn the wrapper around, you will see the actual ingredients, which is in the bar. And there's more than is highlighted on the front. So that's very misleading. And in 2018, they were actually sued due to misleading packaging. Their bars contain natural flavors. And though I have not tried them in probably over six years, maybe maybe seven years, I cannot remember what they actually taste like. Countless of my Instagram followers have sent me messages saying they get stomach aches when consuming these bars. So just be cautious if you have sensitive time Tummies. So for me, I will gladly pass them up. Feel bars, F-E-E-L, feel bars. So I've talked about these quite a bit in my Instagram story. So if you follow me closely on there, you've probably seen me snacking on them. <laughs> Not only do they have clean ingredients, no stevia, no gums, no natural flavors, but they're also nut-free, vegan, keto, and paleo-friendly. They're pretty low in sugar and the amount of protein in them is considerably high compared to many on on the market. So each bar contains 15 grams of protein and it varies between 180 to 200 calories. And I think they taste pretty good, honestly. The protein they use is pea and each flavor contains different adaptogens. So depending on the flavor, you get different benefits. These flavors include vanilla chai bliss, sun butter chip, caramel sea salt, mint chocolate chip, golden goddess, matcha latte, and brownie chocolate chip. These are definitely worth a try if you're looking for a low carb, low sugar, vegan, keto, or paleo protein bar without the junk. All right, now let's talk about Scout Organic. Again, if you've been following me on Instagram, then you've probably also seen Scout Bars in my rotation. Now, I wouldn't call them a protein bar per se as they only have 10 grams per bar, much higher than some, right? But when I am looking for a protein bar, I want protein, right? At least 15 grams. So nonetheless, these are still great and super tasty with clean, all organic certified ingredients. And they come in handy as a whole food bar and good nutrition on the go. Sadly, I just heard from the company that they are discontinuing most of their bars and only keeping a few. And since their new cookie line is just really taking off, they had to scale down on other items. So the only bars they are keeping are their peanut butter flavors, which I don't consume peanuts. So, but as for now, they do still offer the um, the other non-peanut flavors on their website, which, uh, which are salted chocolate, coconut, vanilla, and chocolate cherry. These bars contain no natural flavors, no gums, no stevia, no monk fruit, and no added sugar. 
The only sugar in these bars are the ones that naturally come from the organic dates in the bars. So Scout Organic uses sunflower seed protein powder for the protein in them, and they range from three to five ingredients per bar, depending on the flavor. And that's, I love just the simplicity from three to five ingredients. So if, if you're sad like me and still want to have access to their non-peanut flavors, I'm, I'm calling y'all to do some, a favor for me. Please, I highly suggest reaching out to the company and expressing your disappointment. The power of the consumer's voice truly can make a difference. So again, Scout Organic. Have you guys heard of Happy Wolf Bars? So I stumbled across these bars not too long ago and the founder of the company turned out to be a longtime Instagram follower of mine. So that was kind of cool. We got to talking and she sent me some of her bars to try and I was super impressed. All of Happy Wolf Bars are certified organic, contain no natural flavors, no gums, no stevia, no monk fruit, and every Happy Wolf product is free from the top nine most common allergens, including peanuts, tree nuts, wheat, gluten, dairy, eggs, fish, shellfish, soy, and sesame. They do contain organic gluten-free certified oats, however, so they are not necessarily grain-free. Each bar is about 110 calories with around 12 grams of carbs and the sugar content is around six grams. That only just comes from the organic fruit inside of the bar. The protein content is quite low coming in at three grams. So these are certainly not a protein bar, but just a better for you snack geared towards kids specifically to make just better school safe snacks just for your kids. But obviously they're not just for kids. They are for adults as well. So keep in mind that the Happy Wolf bars are smaller. So they are for like a smaller child, but I personally think that doesn't mean that, again, adults can't enjoy them because let's face it, adults, I feel like the serving size in general is just, it's become larger these days. And even people in other countries, Europe specifically, they eat smaller portions. They don't really diet. It's just the portion size is so much smaller and they literally eat like whatever they want. So these may be a good option for you and your kids. Again, I love that they are free from the top nine most common allergens and are school safe. The flavors they come in are strawberry, chocolate chip, apple cinnamon, and chocolate banana. So they have my seal of approval. IQ bars, IQ bars. These bars are keto and have been getting a lot of hype lately. I've seen well-known influencers and athletes promote these. So I, of course, had to look into them for a, a better look myself. So I, I had high hopes, you guys, but I immediately looked at the ingredients and saw stevia, which we all know is an endocrine disruptor as well as has been used as a contraceptive. So if you didn't know, do yourself a favor and look at the reel on my Instagram. I posted not that long ago, sharing the studies to back these claims. Guys, it's insane. For anyone trying to conceive or simply not wanting their hormones disrupted, look into the effects of stevia. These bars also contain natural flavors and acacia gum, which is one of the gums I stay away from that can cause digestive discomfort. The second ingredient in IQ bars is tapioca fiber, which is what makes it low carb to increase the fiber content to make the net carbs low and keto friendly. But we all know that any kind of fiber added to something is fake fiber and also causes digestive discomfort, gas, and bloating. Needless to say, these are not for me, nor would I recommend them to anyone with IBS or anyone at all, given the stevia aspect. All right, belly welly bars. These have gotten a lot of hype recently as well. So first of all, if you're looking for protein, don't look here. <laughs> One bar has about 180 calories and only four grams of protein. So this is certainly not a protein bar, but more of a food bar. There's about 10 grams of fat in the chocolate chip version and 21 grams of carbs. This is because the second ingredient is oat flour, which is not even organic. And if you are going to be eating oats, be sure they are organic because oats are one of the 
top heaviest glyphosate sprayed crops. The first ingredient is almond butter, by the way. And the third ingredient is chocolate chips, which consists of sugar, chocolate liqueur, and cocoa butter. These bars also contain natural flavors, brown rice syrup, brown sugar, and whole rolled oats. I counted three different forms of sugar in this bar and oats in here twice. So the the oats are in the form of oat flour and whole oats. The reason I can only assume these are marketed as gut friendly is because they contain bacillus coagulans, which are a type of probiotic. These are actually really good probiotics that are in my own digestive support protein powder, and they are great for the gut. However, just because something adds probiotics to their ingredient list doesn't make it automatically good for the gut. You always have to take into consideration the other ingredients and factor those into the equation. If McDonald's started adding probiotics to their milkshakes and started promoting it as gut friendly, I bet you tons of people would fall for it. I see this all the time where like companies will add one element to their product that supports digestion, but all the other ingredients in their products disrupt the gut. But because of that one single gut promoting ingredient they added, they can now claim it as quote, gut healthy. These bars are a hard pass in my own personal opinion. But again, this is all just my personal opinion and observations in this episode. It's all about informed consent. Ultimately, you have to take charge of your own health and decide what you want to put into your body. Now that concludes this episode. And if you guys enjoyed it, please remember to share it with your friends and family and post about it on Instagram and tag me so I can see. I always love knowing my podcast is being enjoyed. See you guys next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a Resonant Media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Mike Fry. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.